there's a not so well-known tool controllers have that could be the difference to avoid an emergency on an IFR flight. We're cruising above the Blue Ridge Mountains east of Asheville, North Carolina. We're southbound on Victor 605. Our magnetic course is 178, so even though the airway looks like it takes us in a direction on the eastern side of the compass rose, we're using a westbound even thousand IFR altitude. The minimum in route altitude here is 10,000 feet, so that's what we're cruising at. The outside air temp is well below freezing. We start out above a broken layer of clouds, but as we continue, we find that layer has risen, and we're now in solid IMC. Clouds and freezing temps are a bad combination, and before long, we start to accumulate ice. Part of good decision making is to never continue a flight where you don't have the option of simply doing a 180 to get out of trouble. But the clouds have risen up all around us to envelop us, and here we are. We could try to climb back above the layer, but we're not sure just where the tops are and we can't get our Cessna 172 too much higher than this already. We've learned about minimum obstruction clearance altitudes. We're at 10,000 because that's what the MEA is, but the number with the asterisk 8500 is the minimum obstruction clearance altitude. It allows for 2,000 feet of clearance in mountainous areas like this one in a four mile corridor around the airway. We're using GPS to navigate so we could follow the airway even far from VORs like this. We let ATC know we're picking up ice and want to descend to the MOCA, and they clear us down to 8500. Typically, 8500 doesn't conform to the even or odd thousand foot altitude convention, but because we're in a threatening situation, ATC makes the accommodation. As we descend, we get a peek at the cloud situation. We hope to be able to duck below the layer at 8500, but when we get there, we see that we're still very much in the thick of it. The lower altitude's got a slightly warmer temps, but it's still well below freezing out. We need to get lower, but those mountains have a habit of reaching out and grabbing low-flying aircraft. Can we safely go lower? There's another minimum altitude, the Aroka Off-Route Obstruction Clearance Altitude. That's going to be 9,000 to our west, which is no help, and 7,700 to the east, which is a bit lower, but not by much. It's at this point we could ask for, or ATC could offer, descent to the minimum vectoring altitude. The MVA isn't published officially and is used by controllers. A chart like this one is available to them for a given area like Asheville. Different sectors have different MVAs, each one designed to give the same 2,000 feet of obstacle clearance in mountainous areas. As it happens, our airway is taking us from the sector with an MVA of 7,900 to one at just 5,500. ATC tells us to fly present heading and descend and maintain 5,500. 5,500 seems very low for this area and we're naturally a bit skeptical, so we switch the MFD over to show relative terrain heights. As we descend, it'll begin showing areas less than 2,000 feet below our present altitude, which would violate the minimum clearance requirements in 91,177. We emerge below the ice. As we keep descending, we find that even down at 5,500, we're at least 2,000 feet above any terrain in front of us. The minimum vectoring altitude keeps us plenty clear, even though the airway mocha and the surrounding arocas are much higher than 5,500. We shouldn't stay this low for too long without a plan. We're VFR and out of the ice, though the temps are still freezing, so we can't expect to completely de-ice naturally. It's probably best if we find our nearest airport, which is Rutherford County, about 10 miles right ahead, and land and reassess from there. In this instance, letting ATC know exactly the nature of what we were experiencing opened up the possibility of trying to first fly at the MOCA, which we don't typically cruise at, and then at the minimum vectoring altitude. You won't usually know the MVA in the area you're flying in, but ATC does, and as long as you're in radar contact and can be vectored, they can make this available to you if needed. Our IFR training is about more than tips and tricks, but deep knowledge you can apply to every flight you make. Whether you're a student or an experienced instrument pilot, check out Ground School today at the link here and in the description.